What's up everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. A few months ago I told you guys that I'm going to slowly be moving most of my adult tarantulas into bioactive vivaria. It's a goal I've had for quite some time, but it's taking a lot of effort and monetary... <laughs> monetary wealth to execute because well terrariums are not cheap plants substrates hardscape everything else that goes into them also not cheap but one by one I will do this and I'm loving the results so far stay tuned to the end of the video so that you can see how that uh, well that Costa Rican red like tarantulas enclosure is looking in today's video we are going to be rehousing the second tarantula who coincidentally is also a new animal that I've acquired into bioactive avaria yes I know you're thinking thinking, aren't you gonna let the ones that you've had for the longest go into the new homes? I will, but if you know me well, I absolutely love the Postalotheria genus. The Sri Lankan and Indian ornamental tarantulas, that genus is incredible, elegant. They are so cryptic, they have these beautiful patterns. And so, as I slowly kind of downsize in what I have multiple individuals of, or kind of narrow into what species I want to work with most. Postalotheria is one genus that I want to focus on but also expand on a bit. And a species that I've been really hoping to keep again was the Postalotheria safusca and specifically there's the, well we have the lowland or bara, the Postalotheria safusca highland and then the Postalotheria safusca pascala cellier which is kind of like the highland but I think it gets bigger than the highland. Bara or lowland being the largest. In any case, as far as I know they're still considered one one species but realistically they probably need to be split up into at least two if you know you know I hope I didn't overwhelm you there but Today, I'm so excited to share that I acquired 1.1 or a male female pair of adult Postalotheria Sophusca Pasca Lesselier. They are absolutely gorgeous. Wait till you see these spiders. First thing we're going to do is set up a beautiful 12 by 12 by 18 Exoterra terrarium with a Tarantula Cribs custom acrylic replacement for that said tank. We don't want all that ventilation that is really helpful for reptiles and amphibians, but less helpful for maintaining the environment we want for our tarantula. So we're gonna replace the lid with that, and then we will move the animals into the, well, one animal, we'll move the female tarantula into her new home and have a closer look. So it'll be kind of a rehousing slash setup video. I hope you're gonna love it, giving you guys something you wanna see too. So I know you guys said you wanna see some tarantula content this week, arachnid content, here we come. As I mentioned previously, the Postalotheria genus are native to the forests of India and Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, through urbanization, deforestation has caused these animals to become endangered. However, thankfully, many species of Postalotheria have adapted to an urban environment. Alright everybody, so first things first, we have our empty terrarium here. It's like I said, 12 by 12 by 18 in Exoterra. And here is a cork bark background that I cut out to fit snug perfectly. Our tarantula cribs acrylic replacement lid, perfect for making a tarantula habitat. I'm gonna set that aside here. And we're gonna take our screen lid off now so we can get started and plan our scape. Admittedly, this uh, <laughs> cutting job was not the greatest with the saw. You'll see that there's a little weird gap, but thank goodness it fits perfectly snug in. We don't need to apply any silicone to the background. I love it when that happens, so we're set to get started. All right, so I have a few different materials I want to use for this build. I cut a bunch of cork tubes, and here we have stone desert substrate, which we're going to use to move the cork tube onto the background and adhere it there. So we're going to pour some of that in here. Then we have to add some water, which we can then mix in. And what's fantastic is this becomes a malleable cement-like material that we can create different scapes with, we can technically make caves with it, and so on and so forth. So once we've evenly distributed the water throughout, we'll get to the right consistency and start sculpting our cork tube of choice onto the background. Now I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I want this to be positioned, if it makes sense to lay the tank down and sculpt around. I was thinking of centering it maybe, so I'm trying to see how that looks. But then finally I had this idea to put it in the corner and have it angled down enough that we can kind of look into it. 
Again, I want this to be accessible so that when we're filming the animal, you'll actually be able to see them run out of their hiding spot and grab prey and things like that. So I think where I'm at is that I'd like to set this up here. With a position and angle in mind, I begin grabbing my stone desert substrate and just pushing it up against the background and slowly trying to secure the cork tube in the position I want it to stay. Truth be told, this isn't exactly the easiest process, and I'm sure there's a better way I could have done it, but as you'll see soon, it, it worked out in the end, and um, I got it the way I need it to be, so more power to me, I guess. You can see that I'm adding some thicker material between the floor of the terrarium and the base or bottom of that cork tube, again, just to kind of help support it more. As this dries, it'll become very firm and hard, and yeah, that'll, that'll really be solid and help the structure. But what I'm also doing is leaving a gap there open, because as we push substrate into it, I want it to still be accessible from the bottom here. So I don't want to close it off completely, because if we need to get to the spider, or hopefully an egg sac in the future, there needs to be some way of getting into there from both sides. Now, the next step is to make a lot of this arboreal space usable. Yes, the tarantula can climb on all the surface areas of the tank, but we need to increase the surface area that's usable to the animal by adding a few pieces of wood. This isn't much, but I think it'll do something for the spider, so I'm just picking how I want to position these pieces of dried wood I collected and treated, and then I'll fix them into the scape using more of the stone desert substrate. Remember how I said I wasn't so happy about how I cut my background? Well, I can also use some of the stone desert substrate to close off those little gaps. That way feeders like crickets and such won't wedge themselves behind there and become inaccessible to the tarantula. Perhaps unnecessary, I kind of want to just rub some of the clay on different surfaces of the tank. Kind of give the, uh, you know, the look that there might have been a bit of substrate or, or soil that washed down a slope and, and got all over everything during rain, etc just so things don't seem like they're disconnected, you know? Like that substrate should be on things in the area, it shouldn't just be clean pieces of wood around bits of clay and such. With our stone desert substrate dry within a day or so, we're now going to add some substrate to the base of the enclosure. Here I'm just using some Zilla Jungle Mix. I like this stuff a lot, it's absorbent, it provides nutrients to plants, it's a good little mixture of peat and, and fur bark. Essentially a leftover bag that I want to use up now. Time to spread it out all evenly. And move a good amount of the substrate into that corner below the cork tube. If all goes well, the tarantula will find the entrance of the tube and make our way down and dig it out and empty it, etc. Alright guys, I'm pretty happy with what we have and once the plants are in there and growing, it'll look great. So to start, we're going to be placing some cuttings of the Ming Aurelia, or I believe it's also sometimes called Buddhist Pine, into this terrarium. I love this. It looks like a full-grown tree in a small proportion. It's a fantastic plant. Lots of surface area, lots of nice sized branches. It almost looks like a bit of a bonsai. But it, and it grows to be a decent size, but it doesn't grow too quickly. Honestly, just perfect. So these will occupy and grow into the above space and give the tarantula a sense of cover and security at night. So we're going to put two of these in here along the left side. For the right side of the terrarium, we're adding some goldfish plants. I love these. They look really elegant and they'll grow nice. And if they really thrive, they'll even put out beautiful little orange flowers, hence the common name. Now I took another cutting and I was like, man, this would look nice up here, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to take some of the stone desert substrate and create a bit of a retaining wall so that we can add some soil over top of the cork tube so that we can place a cutting there to grow. Isn't that, I mean, I'm pretty smart. I think that's a very, very genius idea, no? So there you go, everybody. This looks, I think, really great. And just imagine when it actually grows in over time. This is going to be fantastic, the spider is going to have the best life in that cork tube. It's going to be so cool. So now I'm just going to go in here and water each plant because the substrate isn't particularly moist yet. And then we're going to go and take some natural leaf litter and sprinkle it all over the tank to give it that naturalistic look. I'm not going to go ahead and add isopods or springtails right now. I may very well add springtails at some point. 
we'll see. I mean, again, I'm going more for just a naturalistic enclosure, not so much the full, true bioactive. Loki, this kind of meets the general standard of what people see as bioactive, but this to me is just a naturalistic planted enclosure, and I think this alone will suffice, and I'll do spot cleaning for the animal. But as you can see, the leaf litter makes a huge difference in accenting the terrarium's overall appearance. And now, all we have to do is put our tarantula cribs, acrylic replacement lid on top, and I think we're ready for our tarantula to move in. Oops, almost forgot to put a water dish in there too. Okay there, now we're all ready. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, who should we rehouse next? I have several terrariums that are empty and ready to rock. I want you to go back into my tarantula content and choose which animal you think should go into bioactive tank next. We'll pick the top few spiders, do a community poll. Whoever wins is getting a new upgrade. Go ahead, let me know in the comments, vote the animals up, give them a thumbs up if you want that one. As always, I'll give your comments or in this case suggestions a heart. We can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thank you. Okay everybody, now that the enclosure is all set up, we're gonna go ahead and meet the new spider. So here is the female, Oslotheria sofusca pascal lesselier. And then here is the mature male in this enclosure. Uh, he's not gonna come out because this is kind of like the mature male container. Uh, he'll come out when he's gonna be paired with the female in here, but he's chilling in here for now. We'll try and get a closer look at him later to show you the difference between an adult male and an adult female. But let's get this girl out of this temporary little container and move her into her future home. She is absolutely gorgeous. For this, we have a catch cup with a lid, a paintbrush for gently coaxing her, bamboo tongs and metal tongs. All right, fun times begin now. Quick disclaimer, I want to let people know that Postolotheria as a genus do possess some of the most potent venom of any tarantula family. Uh, so please exercise a great deal of caution when working with these spiders. They can be very flighty and quick, and some of them are a bit more defensive in nature. Oh boy, that is a very pretty tarantula. Now I do love me a Postolotheria metallica, goody sapphire ornamental, that bright blue and yellow, but there's something about the markings on a Postolotheria sapphusca highland that just make me so in awe. Like the fact that nature could produce this pattern and coloration is just something else. Alrighty everyone, we were successful in moving her into the terrarium safely. Now we can let her settle in and do an update in a few months. Oh man, she is just absolutely gorgeous so if you look here this is what a mature male looks like completely different you can see the brown coloration he is a very very different looking spider this is i mentioned an adult male Postotheria sofusca pascal lesselier you can see he has the bulbous pedipopes with the emboli there if you look right under there so he's ready to breed with the female, but he's giving us a little bit of a threat posture to keep him away from the opening. Uh, but yeah, you can see the similar markings on the legs as the female has. Yeah, very, very different animal. So if he is mature, hopefully we can pair him to her soon and film that. It's going to be amazing. Okay everybody, so the last thing I wanted to do before closing off today's video is give you an update on my Abdomegaphobema mesomalas. Alright guys, so, if you didn't see the video, <laughs> link up above here. How nuts is this? You can see she's down here in her burrow, just chilling. The fern there is grown, it's putting off new fernlets over here. The moss in the terrarium is spreading everywhere. And this peperomia here, like I'm gonna have to get in here and trim it back because it's just taking over everything. But you can see there's springtails. It's just a very nicely grown in tank. And at night she wanders around here and explores. I couldn't be happier. Like this is. This is the way it needs to be, guys. We need to be able to house these animals like this, right? So, 
I'm so thrilled. Can't wait to see how this enclosure is going to grow in over time with the different plants like the Buddhist pine and the goldfish plants. I'm sure she's going to web up in here. Maybe I can get some nighttime time lapses, but the light and everything on here, I think this is going to be super cool. We're going to rehouse the rest of my postal theory at some point. But remember, answer today's question of the day. And we'll decide which tarantula gets rehoused next. This is amazing. Super fun. Great things happening here on the arachnid side of Reptiliatus. So there you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's video and really the pleasure of seeing these animals kept bioactive or naturalistically is something else. So I hope this encourages you to potentially do the same. I hope you enjoyed watching this setup. Take care and see you all on Friday.